Hi everybody, this is Mr. Nolan, uh, and what I would like you to be able to do after watching this video, I want you to be able to use spectral lines from stars to determine what those stars are made out of. And uh, so just kind of to recap a little bit, we've already seen spectral lines, we've seen these lines. So when we looked at our spectra of our glowing gases, uh, I made a video previously showing you what these looked like, um, what we saw was that each different element produces a unique set of lines. It's almost a, a color fingerprint. It gives us a unique set of lines. So for instance, hydrogen has three strong lines. One is red, one is cyan, and there's kind of a violet or bluish one. Uh, helium has a different set of lines. There's a really bright yellow there, and there's a few other uh, lines here. Uh, neon is very toward the red, right? It's a big cluster of reds over here. Argon is kind of weak, but we get some indigo, some red, a few faint lines in there. Nitrogen was almost continuous, except for a few gaps. And then mercury, when we electrified mercury, we ended up with some really pretty violet and indigo and a bright lime green and a few other lines. So the point here is not like memorizing all the different uh, spectra, just to recognize that the, the spectra can be known, can be used to figure out what element it is that we're looking at. So what you might encounter is a, a big key that looks a little bit like this. And so all that this key is doing is it is indicating to us, well, what does the spectrum of each element look like when it's excited? And so here, what we can see is that based on our wavelengths, okay, we have a 400 down here toward the left, that means blues, right? And then 700s toward the right, and that indicates um, reds. So if we, you know, just for instance, if we take a look at our hydrogen, we have a red line, cyan, and then there's one kind of hiding out here toward the blues. So if we look at hydrogen, well, there's our red, there's our cyan, and there's the blue that's hiding out. So the hydrogen's got the simplest one, but the uh, uh, other elements, we can also use these to figure out what, what glowing gas are we looking at. And that's all a star is made out of, is glowing gas. So we can use the spectral lines that we see from a star to figure out what elements are there, because each element has a unique spectral fingerprint. It has unique lines that show up when we look at the light through a spectroscope. So let me kind of show you what we're talking about. So here's an example. I've included the key down here. Uh, and this one that's highlighted in yellow is an unknown spectrum. So imagine we point a telescope uh, at a star, and these are the spectral lines that we see. So that's sort of what we're trying to imagine here. Now, I'm going to give you the information that these are two elements, that I see two elements in here. Now, here's the strategy that we have to use in order to figure out what two elements are involved here we have to identify what spectral lines are showing up here in our unknown spectrum, which are unique to a certain element down here. That's the first thing we need to do, and then we just have to figure out which lines are out of place. Those lines that are out of place must belong to other elements. So let me give you an example. Um, take a moment, look at this unknown spectrum, see if you can find any distinctive lines in here or sets of lines that also show up down here in our known spectra. So pause the video, take a quick moment. Do you spot any clusters of lines or any distinctive lines that show up here that you might find down here in our key? So take a moment to pause the video, see if you can figure out maybe what element or elements might be in this spectrum, and then I'll show you how to do it. Okay. So if you're astute, you might be able to notice that there's a cluster of lines here and a little cluster of lines here. And that's distinctive because there's only one element here that, that does that, and that's oxygen. So oxygen has got a cluster right there and a cluster right here, just like our unknown does. And what that indicates is that oxygen is somewhere in here. There's oxygen. And so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to pause the video, and I'm going to look up here. I'm going to take all the lines that must be oxygen, and I'm going to go ahead and turn them a different color. Uh, and any lines that are left over must belong to a different element. So let me go ahead and do that. OK, so what I've done here is I took all the lines that belong to oxygen, and I colored them a different color. Now, on paper, you can use a pencil to highlight them, or you can use a, a marker or something. That way, you can highlight those lines. And I notice, well, there's a few lines here that don't show up in oxygen. There's a thick line here. There's an extra line right next to that cluster. Uh, and then there's also, this line is thicker in my unknown spectrum. You can see there's actually two lines right next to each other. One is green and one is still black. So these black lines, we don't know what these are, but these are the other element. So if we look down here, can you find any elements that only have those, those three black lines?
It's actually pretty easy to spot. Can you spot it? It's right here. It's, it's hydrogen. So that line lines up with this one, this lines up with that one, and this one lines up with that one. And so what that means is the two elements here in this case are oxygen and hydrogen. And so that's how we figured that out. That's how we were able to figure out, well, what's, what's that star made of? It's oxygen and hydrogen. That's what we see in that spectrum. So let's go do a couple of other examples. Um, this one is another one. So we have, again, an unknown spectrum. There's two elements. Take a quick moment, pause the video, see if you can't figure out what it is. Okay, this one's actually sort of easy. Um, if we look here, there's a couple of distinctive lines. It looks to me like it's pretty obvious that helium is present here. So actually, and we can come back here, this is kind of fun. If we look at the spectrum for helium, look at that bright, bright yellow. That's an extremely powerful uh, spectral line. And just like it shows up on here, this line is very thick. Uh, and so we see this bright, bright yellow. Uh, and so, well, we can basically be certain that helium sh is here. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to highlight all of the lines that are for helium in green, just like we did before. Alrighty, so we can tell that there's definitely helium here, and I've turned those lines green. And so now, just looking at the key, which element lines up with the black ones that are left? You should be able to spot it pretty easily. It's hydrogen. There it is. Big thick line right there. Little line there, little line there, just like it is for hydrogen. So what is here must be helium and hydrogen. So we identified that one too, so that's great. Let's go ahead and do another one. Uh, right here, what I have for us is uh, another spectrum. Once again, there's two elements. We don't know what they are. Uh, it looks to me as though the, the really easy ones to spot, uh, if you take a look here, do you see one that kind of jumps out at you at all? So the one that I notice is that there's a little cluster of lines here, followed by a couple there, and I see exactly the same thing down here in calcium. That seems really easy to spot, that cluster and that cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all the lines from calcium in green. Okay, so calcium, I've identified where calcium is, and look where the remaining lines are. There's a line, there's a line, and there's a line. Big thick line right here. What's the only element that has a really big thick line right there? There it is. That's that cyan. Uh, that's sort of greenish. So what we should be able to identify is that, all right, there is calcium, the ones that are in green. These ones that are remaining in black are hydrogen. There it is, right there. So calcium and hydrogen. Here's another one. Uh, this one's pretty difficult. This one's got three elements, so I'm telling you now that there's three elements, and I want you to see if we can spot which ones belong here. So uh, if you pause the video and take a moment to look, you should be able to spot that there's probably carbon up here. Because notice there's a line right there. There's a line here. There's a few lines there. Right? Do you see what I'm seeing? They're very similar to where carbon is. So up here, I'm going to go ahead and turn carbon green. So we know that one of our elements is going to be carbon. There's carbon. And uh, so now what you need to do is look at what elements are remaining. You have to recognize there's two left. Right, so we found one. There's actually two left because there's a total of three. And do you spot any lines that seem distinctive to any other elements here? You know, the one that sticks out to me is helium. I see a thick line right there. Once again, there's that really bright, um, there's that bright yellow there. Uh, and so uh, that's what I'm thinking that thick one is. So helium, let's go ahead and block out all the lines that belong to helium. I'll actually do those in a different color. All right, so how about red? Okay, so what I've done is I've turned all the helium lines red and then all the carbon lines green. The color doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to tell them apart. So we've got carbon, we've got helium, and then what's our last element here? Well, anything, any black lines that remain that aren't colored in yet are the remaining element. So go ahead and look here. It might be a little bit hard to see in your video, but I see three lines. There's one right there, there's a kind of a thick one there, and then there's kind of a thin one there. Do you spot any element that's got those three lines? should be easy to tell that there it is, it's hydrogen. So that's our third element. That's the third one hiding out here. So you see, this really isn't that complicated. It's just a matter of trying to eliminate the elements one at a time until you figure out what they are. This one was carbon, helium, and hydrogen. So let's do just one more. Uh, this is another three element one, uh, kind of difficult. And uh, that's a typo, I should say three. 
And so which three elements here are hiding out in this spectrum? Okay, so which elements do you think that you can spot? Are there any you can spot fairly easily? One of them that I think I spot fairly easily is helium. So notice how helium has those three lines there. Okay, there's those three here. Uh, it's got that little cluster of three. There's three. It's got really a, a, that bright yellow one here. There's a bright one there. So let's go ahead and, and block out helium in, in one color. Okay, so I've, I've turned helium green. And looking at that, do you spot any other elements hidden in there? One that I think is pretty easy to see is hydrogen. Look at that thick black one. There's another one there, and there's another one there. So those three that I see in hydrogen also show up in my unknown spectrum. So, so far we've got helium. We've also got hydrogen. So I'll go ahead and, and block the hydrogen out in red. Okay, so there goes hydrogen. I blocked out hydrogen. So now the only thing that's left are these handful of, of black lines that remain. Can you spot the fingerprint uh, down here? Which element belongs in those black lines that has the same spectrum? Take a minute. Well, if you look carefully, you'll notice it's sodium. There's a little pair of black lines there. That's what makes this area so busy. Um, there's these four. There's like these uh, this, these sets double pair. I see that right here. And then there's a there's a lone one right there that's right next to the thick one from helium. And so the remaining one must be um, uh, sodium, right? There it is. So I hope that I've kind of been able to explain the strategy here for if you're looking at light from a star, how can you use its, its spectrum with these different examples to figure out which elements belong there. If you only have two, or better yet one, uh, it's very easy to do. You just take a quick look down here, okay, which fingerprints you know seem to match. As soon as you get to three, it becomes more complicated, but the strategy is exactly the same. Try to identify lines that belong to specific, you know, elements. Okay, I can easily spot helium, I can easily spot um, you know, uh, you know, sodium. Uh, or whatever, you know, what's, what, what is it that, that it is that I see showing up here? And you just have to do that for as many elements as you can. We can potentially do this for dozens of elements. You might see a very complicated um, uh, spectrum with lines all over the place, and as long as you just are very patient and you eliminate one element at a time based on its key, you can figure out all the elements that are there, which, in fact, we can do. And this is one of our most... Uh, useful tools for figuring out what stars are actually made of. Taking the spectrum, looking at the spectrum of the star, and just using these fingerprints to, to figure out well what what uh, elements does does the star tell us through its spectrum? What you know what is there? And again, I I just want to remind you we're talking about actual light spectra. We're talking about real spectra here. Even though you know it's easy to reduce it down to these lines, we're really talking about real colors that are coming through here. So in real life, this is we see something more like this for a star, not this, right? This is just kind of a representation of what it is that uh, that we're seeing. So I hope that this video was helpful uh, for explaining how can we use spectral lines from stars to determine exactly what they're made of.